YouTube and fellow Stitchers, it's Lisa here. It's my first attempt at uploading any content to um, social media, so uh, please, if there's anything that you want me to do differently or you think I can improve on, then please let me know. I'm open to, to all suggestions as I'm very new to this. So, um, so please be nice and be patient with me as this is um, something that's really new. And I do have a viewfinder which is sitting here and I will try not to look down that. Um, I'll only do it if I'm just checking that I'm in, I'm in focus and I've got some notes with me as well because there's um, certain things that I'd like to, to obviously make sure I talk to you about while I'm here. So um, yeah, so a little bit about me, I'm obviously, I'm Lisa, I am divorced um, which is I guess from a positive perspective gives me plenty of, of free time to do all of the things that I'm interested in. I live with my fur baby Poppy and I'll just put a photo in for you so you can have a look at her. And I also live with four very noisy lovebirds and I'll put their photo in now for you to have a look at. And this picture is them enjoying their aviary. I've got an outdoor kind of flight pen for them. So I'll let them out when it's nice here, which isn't that often as I live in the UK. So this is them enjoying the sunshine. Um, I, I originally had two lovebirds, my own, which are Cupid and Bo, because I bought them on Valentine's Day about yeah, two and a half years ago. And then my mum and dad thought they might like a pair as well, and they bought a pair. Um, their name there is Coco Chanel um, from the fashion designer and it turned out that my mum was actually allergic to them and she was going to rehome them and rather than do that I thought I'd take them as well so I now have four of them they are in separate cages normally in the house but obviously in the summer they um, they're allowed to fly outside together and they get on very very well um, enjoy each other's company so they're actually out there now um, shrieking their heads off and probably annoying the neighbours an awful lot so as you've probably gathered, I'm, I live in the UK. I'm actually in the northeast of the UK, which is hundreds of miles from London. I live nowhere near the city. And kind of geographically wise, if you think of, a lot of people have heard of Newcastle. I live 50 miles south of Newcastle, kind of on the North Yorkshire border. So it's a very beautiful area that I live in. Um, lots of woodland and really nice landscapes. Um, so it's, it's a very nice part of the world to, to live in. In terms of my job, um, I'm very busy with my job. I'm actually a regional business manager for a medical company and, and my job is to take care of and manage 11 sales reps who are based, we called it field based, so they actually work out um, on the road calling on customers, um, so I need to look after those guys, manage them. So I spend quite a lot of time on the road, I drive a lot. Um, yeah, so it, it keeps me very busy and, and obviously away from home quite a lot. In fact, in September, there is not a week in September where I'm not actually physically away from home for at least two nights a week. So that obviously has an impact on my free time and ability to do other things. I also have um, a static caravan um, or a trailer if you uh, are in America. It's quite nice, it's, it's, it's very nice and that's based over on the east coast of the UK so it's right on the seafront so I spend as much time as I can over there, often weekends if I can and that gives me some good stitchy time and obviously gets my dog out on the beach. So yeah, I pack up my car on a Friday after work and the birds go with me, the dog goes with me. So the people must think I'm some sort of crazy dog bird woman when I when I pitch up to the to the static on a on a Friday night. So so yeah, um in terms of my stitchy journey, I have yeah, I've stitched for more than 20 years. In fact, it was a good friend of mine years ago who got me into stitching in my late teens and she used to stitch a lot of the lavender lace, lavender, lavender and lace Nora Corbett pieces, um, which were really pretty. I do have my first um, completed design. I will find it for you and I'll also take some photographs of my FFOs for you um, and I'll insert them in next, uh, next time's video so you can have a look at that. Um, I would say that I got most of my finished 
projects completed in my late teens and early 20s and then since then I think I've become probably a bit more of a serial starter and I guess not really finished as much as I would like. I've got lots of um, dimensions, the DMC dimension goal projects that are sitting there as, as UFOs feeling very unloved and I've also got a couple of really nice mirabilia designs that I bought everything for, kitted up, started and just never got round to and I think part of my problem with cross stitching is obviously life changes and you become busy and obviously I was married during that time and, and you just don't have the I guess the time to sit and do a lot of the stuff but also I think it was because I was trying to work on one one product at a time or one project rather at a time and and yeah I think sometimes you get a little bit bored with that so I guess by having more than one whip on the go it might actually inspire me to do a little bit more and obviously if I'm loading up content to you guys you want to see the fact that I am actually doing something. So I do have other interests and hobbies, in fact I'm known as the queen of hobbies, there's so many things I like to do as well as stitching, I paper craft, so I card make, I do, I stamp um, and colour the images, I do a lot of um, alcohol, alcohol ink colouring and pencil blending and working with distress inks and markers, so I do a lot of that type of thing, I bead and I uh, make beaded jewellery and I'll show you some of this next time. I knit, um, I play the clarinet and the piano, I've actually done some of my um, Royal College of Music exams, I'm kind of, I would say an intermediate level, so I'm a grade 4 out of grade 8 for anybody who understands the UK grading, so I'm kind of midway with those. Um, don't get anywhere near the amount of time to practice as I always like to to be really that good but yeah I enjoy it um, haven't picked up the clarinet in a long time so I really should probably do that uh, what else do I do I'm a qualified clinical hypnotherapist I completed my year-long training course earlier on this year I'm in the process of completing an online makeup artistry course so I'm doing um, the regular makeup the bridal type thing and also the special effects um, where you can turn people into zombies and give them gaping wounds and things like that so I'm, I'm actually doing that and I'm also taking on quite an interest in photography at the moment so so yeah so I'm a busy person um, with lots to do um, and not enough time to do it unfortunately so I'm just going to refer to my notes um, yeah I did put here the one thing that I can't do that I've tried to which is um, I guess needle work um, to a certain extent is crochet I decided it was last year that I was going to make myself a crochet beanie and followed the instructions and seemed to do quite well with it until I'm kind of thinking well <laughs> getting towards the end of the pattern and it's not very long well I I followed it to the best of my ability and I, and I actually thought that it was it was fine but it ended up mid mid forehead so I've got a beanie that covers I guess round to my mid forehead so suffice to say that yeah um, crochet is not for me I haven't had anybody who can show me um, my mum taught me to knit um, my friend my best friend at the time um, taught me how to cross stitch and and, and stitch and, and do some of the specialty stitching but yeah I um, I've had nobody to show me that so yeah I, I've given that up as a as a bad job really um, so without further ado I guess you want to see some of my whips and some of the things that I've been doing so I will insert the picture of the first one in a moment it's a heaven and earth design and it's quite interesting really because I like I do like the Mirabilia ladies and I like the Lavender and Lace and the Nora Corbett type pictures but I also really like the fantasy pictures in um, on the heaven and earth designs in fact my sister likes to stitch also and we sat down together and she flicked I showed her the heaven and earth design um, site website and she was actually really she loved it but she looked at completely the opposite artists that I would naturally be drawn to. She liked the very um, kind of arty, kind of fluffy type images where I tend to go for something that's a little bit more hard hitting and more fantasy, slightly more gothic. So I do have, to a certain extent, a bit of an acquired taste. So obviously my first whip um, 
might raise an eyebrow, um, but it's actually um, designed by Maxine Gad, so I'm going to upload a photo of that for you now to look at. And just to show you, um, that is my progress up to date. Let's see if I can get that up for you to have a look at. I don't know how that's going to look on the screen. I probably not like very much but I'll take a photograph of it as well and you can also have a look at that. But I've had a real problem with this and it's, it's a shame because I've completed a good four pages on it and kind of worked on this darker background piece for a while. So I started this go back to to the start in 2014 and, and made some good progress and then I came back to it the summer last year which is where I started to to think about stitching again and um, kind of got a bit bored with the the background the greys I thought oh I'm gonna I'm almost at the point where I can work on and start her face ahead so I kind of jumped ahead a little bit um, especially kind of down there so you can see where I've started to bring in kind of the the, the head and the face and, and, and it was, was fine but when I came back to it this year I picked it up again in the summer and some of the stitches that I'd made with the lighter colours the skin colours looked really kind of loose it, it didn't it didn't seem to kind of and they look big and it, it just looked awful um, and I guess I think the fabric itself doesn't help. It's 25 count linen and I'm stitching it two over one. And it's almost that the stitches were unsupported in a way because the fabric just feels, I don't know, it's not its not a particularly thick fabric that I'm working on in terms of the linen. It's, it's very flimsy and thin. And so I thought, okay, then I'll, I'll just frog it. So I spent two nights frogging. Um, I got to the point where I'd almost done it and I'd obviously at some point when I was stitching stitched through one of the sloughs on the fabric and I tore it, I ripped it and I pulled out a whole kind of horizontal um, weave um, section of the fabric and I don't know if anybody knows how I can overcome that if you've kind of torn the linen I mean it's, it's not across the whole piece it's kind of you can't even see it on here because I'm not going to be able to zoom in enough for you but it's kind of just small a small section of it and and it's just yeah I'm, I'm just really upset about it because I think I'm probably going to have to start it again I have bought some more fabric to replace it I just I just don't like really stitching on linen I think I found the thing that I really I'm not keen on so I've bought some 25 count I think it's Hardanger I'll tell you now for it oh it's Lugana I've bought some 25 count Lugana for it and I think I'll start it again because luckily this has happened at the point where it, it you can't really see it well I haven't done enough progress so well I have done quite a lot of progress <laughs> but I think yeah I think I'm probably gonna have to start it again so yeah it's a little bit sad um, but at least I hadn't done pages and pages and pages of it. Um, so that's that story. The second whip I have, I actually started um, in, when did I start it? The 10th of June this year and I'll insert the picture of it now. It's another heaven and earth design. And I just, I just love the colours on that, on that piece. It's, it's so vibrant. It's so beautiful. And so I'm stitching it on 22 count hard hanger, which naturally makes it a lot busier. So I mean, this is a labour of love. I think I'll be doing this um, probably <laughs> until I'm 50, um, but at least for the next two years. So I'll show you my progress so far. Um, I'm really not sure if that's going to focus at all. Um, on that but that's kind of where I'm at so I've finished a full page and then I kind of wanted to do a bit of the the wing and, and bring in a different color at this point so that's 
um, where I am. And, and what I've done with these, because I know people have mentioned that you kind of can get tension lines running if you work in strips and blocks and, and, and such like. So when I'm reaching towards the end of a page, I will then sort of open up the next page. I work on PDF, so I'll open up the next page and I'll start to carry the stitches through a little bit just so it doesn't end up as, as obvious as where you can see the starts and finishes really. Um, it seems to be it seems to be working okay. I mean, as you can see from this, I don't park, um, so that is less of a problem for me. I tend to I'm more of a cross country stitcher, but I wouldn't stitch a page in one colour and then go back and and, and select the next colour. I kind of work with a colour um, and and run with it until it gets to the point where it's probably going to be difficult to count to make to the next stage where that colour appears and then I'll just take the nearest colour to it and kind of build the picture like that so yeah and just here's, here's the dog I, I thought I thought she might appear um, at some point during the day so um, here she is are you coming to say hi Poppy? Poppy are you coming to say hi? Are you coming? Or are you going to lay there? Are you coming up? Do you want to come up? Are you coming? Excuse her at the moment. She's got, um, she is. This is my poppy. This is my little fur baby. Look, there's a camera. Are you going to speak to the camera and say hi? Hi. <laughs> um, she's got a head cone on at the moment. She's, um, oh, she's obviously seen something out the window. We, um, we think she has um, allergies and she's been really licking her feet. Uh, a pause rather um, and she'll she'll go at them like like crazy um, to the point where she she'll draw blood and um, and I think I think she has a gluten intolerance intolerance in fact my sister texted me this morning she's been researching it for me because obviously everybody's feeling very sorry for Poppy with this almost um, quite nasty um, head collar on um and yeah apparently it could be a gluten intolerance now i have sorted her diet out um but i didn't think and it's stupid really but a lot of her treats are not um speciality gluten free or kind of hypoallergenic i guess and obviously then you get those eyes looking at you and i feel really guilty and give her the odd corner of my toast or a bit of my sandwich or a crisp or something like that so I really need to, to stop doing that I need to stop feeding you I need to stop feeding you and we can get a stupid collar off you're gonna go down for me baby go on down everybody's seeing you now uh, so so yeah back to the whips um so where was I on here yep we've got another heaven and earth design I love the heaven and earth designs um I guess when I'm thinking about projects um, to take and, and what I'm going to do, I, I'm thinking very much about what I'd want on my wall in terms of artwork and what I'd be happy with people seeing. And I do like, um, I guess, the more, bust, the more robust artwork pieces um, because, that, I mean, that's what Heaven and Earth is, isn't it? It's actual artwork that's been um, converted into charts. So... Yeah, I mean that that really appeals to me. So this is um, so this is um, I'll insert the picture of it now so you can have a look. And this is my progress so far on on this design. It um, again is stitched two over one on 22 count hardanger um started this on the 4th of july and this one got quite a lot of love um i was on holiday the week before last and spent a lot of time on this so this will not be coming out um for a little while um yeah it's it's a little bit different to the pattern the pattern looks quite um it looks like it's in a, a portrait but it's actually a landscape design so there's more background than the um photo i've just shown you um, suggest so at this point here um, kind of where the needle mind is sitting at the top of a head will will come in so there's quite a lot of kind of cloudscape and um, to yeah to, to think about there so yeah it's still very very nice pretty design um, so I'm enjoying working on that but that as I said will not come out for um, yeah a good few weeks I would think um, my other 
whip is, I'll insert the picture for you now. And it is a bothy design um, and it's a gorgeous girl as you can see there and oh, I'm trying to pick it up it's very not very big um, this is my progress so far um, on on this one bear with me while I fold it that way and it might stood up a little bit yeah so there we go so that's kind of where I am with this so um, making some decent process uh, progress this has caused me probably more problems than a heaven and earth. I guess it's because it's so simple. I, yeah, um, yeah, I've done quite a lot of frogging on this. It's taken me a, a, a long time to do. And um, what I've tried to do as well, because it's quite blocky, quite pixelated, I've tried to um, put some fractional stitches in here just to kind of soften the edges a little bit. So kind of where her arm would naturally curve and I guess to make the the dress as it comes down a little less blocky I kind of smooth things out so having to try and think about the pattern to that extent is also it's not the sort of thing you can just mindlessly sit, uh, sit and put X's on on a page you really you really need to think about this one if you if you're modifying I guess with any pattern um, this is actually for my niece um, Olivia uh, as it as it happens which is really good news my sister and her family husband and two daughters my nieces Ella and Olivia moved to my town recently my sister Kerry married um, Shannon who's in the uh, he was a para so he was in the the forces the UK um, armed forces and she spent a lot of her life traveling and moving around living in different uh, military quarters with him throughout her life and he, get, he still does work for the um, forces but um, he doesn't go on tours anymore so they decided to buy um, a house of their own this time rather than living in, in army accommodation so she's thankfully chosen to live near me so I've got my um, family living close and my mum and dad are looking to move to the same town that we're in as well they don't live that far away now only about 20 minutes but it'll be good to have everybody based in the same way so I said to both of my nieces I'd stitch them something for their new bedroom so they both love gorgeous girls and and this is for Olivia who's the youngest of the two and then I'm going to obviously stitch one for Ella um She's already chosen her design and no doubt over the coming weeks you'll, you'll see the progress on that. But this is the one that I really want to make some progress with. I'd like to have these finished for them as soon as possible really. They are expecting them and I guess when you tell kids you're doing something for them then they expect it tomorrow. So um, so yeah, I'd, I really want to get some um, time and effort put into this one, particularly over September. I'd like to try and get it finished this month if I can. Um, that's my, I guess... Um, overarching goal but we'll, we'll see how that progresses as we move on and finally my last whip is not a cross stitch as such it's it's a black work piece and I'll insert the image for you now you'll have seen this many many times and yes I am stitching the save the stitches uh, black work um, but this is purple work and this is inspired by um, Carolyn Mazio who completed hers on black fabric this is on 25 count um, Lugana um, she did hers in teal because it was the the colors of one of her local sports um, teams and, and I'm stitching this in purples because uh, this is the color of my bedroom so I wanted to um, yeah to do this one a little bit different I thought hers looked beautiful on the black and yeah, she's inspired me to, to, to do something similar. So um, I'll tell you what um, threads I'm putting in this next time. I've forgotten to bring them with me, but um, it, it's basically the DMCs in, in silver, gold, and, and where it would be copper. Normally I've put kind of a really light purple um, color in there to kind of contrast it. Um, so yeah, so that they're my whips at the moment. It's a little bit different. Um, see three heaven and earths in there uh, yeah a little a little challenging but you know <laughs> it's it's a marathon isn't it it's not it's not a sprint finish with with um, stitching so yeah I kind of accept it as it is so I do have um, some new starts for September which I'll be doing I've ordered them I was 
sadly, or should I say sadly, I don't know whether sadly is the right word, I've been enabled, as, as you do. Um, I have obviously binged on Pam Reed's um, uploads. In fact, I think there isn't very many of Pam Reed's that I haven't looked at. Um, I've watched her Record Girls, I've watched the project that she did for her father, and then I also noticed some of the Clouds Factories um, pieces that she did. I know she did Doctor Who and she did the George Jaws for her husband and I kind of had a look on to see what type of thing were on there and I found the um, Through the Zodiac uh, sampler which I'll put in for you now um, it was the 2015 stitch along so I love anything to do with um, I guess uh, horoscopes and, and, and things like that so I will I'm going to start that obviously the Sal's long gone but it doesn't matter because I'd never keep up with one anyway and um, so I'm going to complete that I think it's a really it's a beautiful design actually and obviously there's lots of different um, specialty threads in there I've never stitched with anything other than DMC so I'm really looking forward to get my hands on some of the um, the silks in there I think it calls for weeks dye work so I'm looking forward to to start with that um, the other thing that I purchased off there I'm a big big Harry Potter fan was the giant Harry Potter sampler, which I'll just put a picture across for you now. This is, um, it's expensive, it's so expensive, the pattern was ridiculous, but um, yeah, I think, I'm, I think I'll really like that and enjoy stitching up the different components because obviously through each of the, the books or the movies or however you've kind of read, listened, uh, through the audiobooks or watch the movies there's, there's, there's different parts so you get a feel for the different stages of the of the books coming through through the sampler so it's really nice and then I was enabled once again by Cassandra from Cassie Stitches who introduced me to the um, the pumpkin um, oh god what's it called I've written it down here I knew I'm forgetting it the frosted pumpkin stitchery and um, yeah I found the um, Pumpkin Passport, which was this year's Stitch Along. Um, obviously, it will not be completed this year. I think they're on, I think they're about to release September. In fact, they'll release September next week because it comes out the first of every month. So I haven't even started it. So there's like eight months I haven't even, haven't even done. Um, but I just, I just like the, the quirky design and the way that's set up. And it's not a huge piece. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do that one. I really like it. Um, so so yeah, I mean that's kind of my first introduction video. I will, um, as I said, I will upload some of the photographs of my FFOs that I've I've done. I do have um, some some stash. I don't have a lot of stash. I probably have more than I think because I moved into the house I'm in now more than five years ago, and there's still a box in my garage which I haven't unpacked which has stitching stash in it and I'm kind of itching to get into that to see what I've got because there are there's a lot of floss in there and there's probably a lot of patterns that I would like um, to to finish there's a lot of starts in there I know that much um, UFOs definitely um, but I just wish I had more hands and more eyes and more time so I could kind of stitch more, but it's not possible, is it? It just takes such a long time to do them. It's not fast, but but anyway, I will no doubt um, kind of show you what I've got at, at some point and there's some tags that I'd like to do. I'd like to do the Know Your Needle Worker tag and your stitching style tag. I'll do them at some point as well. Uh, because I'm not sure with, with work this month that I'm going to have an awful lot of updates to show you really come the end of September uh, with me being away so much but you know we'll see um, and I'm hoping that doing these videos will encourage me to do more to to plan and, and do more um, so yeah but as I said that's the start and it's, it's really nice to be part of such a lovely community um, I've seen comments that people have written. It's all very positive and very nice. So, um, so yeah, I'm glad to be a part of this with you guys. And, yeah, I look forward to seeing you really soon. Take care. Bye.